All right. Welcome to the Power Ted Sports Talk Week 14. This week it is your host, Andrew Gibb, uh, with the hot takes and the good jokes. Uh, also with us this week is our token girl and probably the most qualified person to be on a sports talk show, Aaron Polsey. <laughs> uh, our soft spoken but always accurate little man, Brady Gibb, to my left. Our man that keeps us on track every week and usually is pretty accurate as well, John Sacco. And our special guest this week played football at Ball State before transferring over to baseball and being taken in the second round of the MLB draft in 2010 by the Philadelphia Phillies. He's played in Lynchburg, Reading, Allentown, Williamsport, Clearwater, Akron, Columbus, and the biggest games of them all in Cleveland. He's the executive director for the Tuscarawas County Rainbow Connection. Remember to catch his show, 99 Miles Per Hour, on YouTube. Percy Gardner III. Appreciate you having me. Excited Round to be of here. Applause. Yeah. Round of applause there. All right. Yeah, I appreciate the, you, you the clap track in the background. Your bio, <laughs> yeah, I'll have to find the uh, <laughs> the clap track and uh, pose. But... Yeah, um, I'll have the link for his show in the description. Um, remember to follow us on Twitch if you aren't watching live. Remember to follow us on YouTube so you can catch it afterwards if you can't make it. And follow us on Twitter. We can get updates on when stuff goes live and when it gets posted. Um, let's get right into it. Um, OSU at Michigan State. OSU's Heisman candidate Justin Fields is, is just all go right now. I think that nothing's going to stop him. I think he needs to – he probably should be in the Heisman talk over some other people, but right now he isn't. Um, OSU's defense still needs some work. I think they win against Michigan State pretty easily. I think next week might possibly be a trap game before the Big Ten championship, but I'm going to take OSU winning big over – the Spartans this week. Go Buckeyes. Yeah, I'm going with the Bucks too. Um, I'm all Ohio State everything. It's game day, so you have to rep. But I think the Bucks are going to take this one big just because they know that they have to have some big games and decisive wins to make that college football playoff after sitting out a couple games due to COVID. Um, so, yeah, I'm going with the Bucks. Easy. All right. Socko? <laughs> I'm also taking the Bucks here. Yeah, they've had a couple games canceled already. They know – that if they cannot afford to slip up and Michigan state is a good uh, team to build back your momentum, the momentum you had before all these cancellations going into the big game, that's going to be, even though Michigan is not good, that's always a good game to watch. Both teams bring their all. And I know Michigan, they don't care if they lose every single game, as long as they beat Ohio state, that's a successful season. So they'll bring it. So th I think that's the game to watch, and Michigan State is a good prep game for that. Yeah. All right, Brady? Mm. Uh, so with Ohio State knowing that they can't get another game canceled for them to not make the Big Ten, I think that it will impact them, and I think they'll win by 26. So I got Ohio State. All right, and first? Wow. Well, uh, <sighs> you know, there's, some, there's some, some bad blood between me and Ohio State. You know, they didn't recruit me. <laughs> in, either, in either sport and uh oh neither gosh. did kent state for that matter but oh <laughs> ohio state has always struck me as a team that they like to to live on the edge you know and they don't always like to take care of business when it needs to be taken care of they like to play those close games even when they won the national championship back they barely beat i think purdue and and penn state and those teams and i think michigan state even though they're you know not you know like like John said, the, the greatest, uh, <clears throat> I think there'll be more than a prep game. And I think, uh, you know, Ohio State, they're still going to squeak it out, but it's, it's going to scare some Ohio State fans. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, every year for the mm -hmm. past, what, five years, they've had a trap game that gets them. Last year, oh, yeah. years ago is Purdue, where it's like, oh, yeah, you should win this game with ease. And then you blow And then it. you have the Iowa game. And then yeah. before that, the national championship season, you have Virginia Tech. A lot of yeah. people thought the season was over after that. Yeah. So, but yeah, Ohio State usually yeah. has some trap game. The thing you have to recognize with the trap games, though, when it comes to Ohio State, they're always in the first half of the season. Like, especially mm -hmm. the year they won the National Championship, Virginia Tech was week two. So, generally, by the end of the season, they're firing on all cylinders. I know this season's a little different because it's short. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But – I don't think that this is going to be a trap game. But I maybe with those cancellations, um, it, it is different because 
it it very much is sort of like yeah you're still playing in your first half after an extended break yeah, yeah but they've had extra time to prepare though so like if they don't take that seriously then that i think that's on the coaching I don't think mm-hmm. it's on the players. If they don't use that extra time that they have to prepare well for this game, I don't, I have nothing to say. I would be very disappointed, but yeah. yeah. And I want to mm-hmm. mention one more thing that I was talking about, you know, the old times, you know, that was a long time ago, but that was, you know, back with the Craig Krenzel and stuff, they didn't really have the talent overall that they did now, but they still, that's just been a tradition of Ohio State. <laughs> So. Yeah. I mean, you had that, that whenever one that we're trying to get rid of one that we don't want to keep. <laughs> yeah. When Dobbins is in his first year of success and you are having who was quarterback two years ago against Purdue. That was Haskins. That, been, that, that Haskins. Been Haskins first year. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, you have the talent there. You had Chase Young. You had all the talent you could have, but I think it was you went into it already thinking about next week's game, not focusing on the game at hand. Mm hmm. And I very much said that, but I still don't think Michigan State has the talent to overcome Ohio State right now, even though I do think Ohio State is looking ahead. Yeah. Or the cohesiveness as a team. Like we talked before, they don't really have an identity within the Big Ten Michigan State does. Um, They've been Mm -hmm. good in the past, but this is a new coach, a new system for them, uh, newer at least in the last, you know, year or two. So I think it's still going to take a while for Michigan State to start firing on all cylinders within the Big Ten yeah. alone. Yeah. I mean, Michigan's still waiting to fire on all cylinders in the Big Ten. So <laughs> sometimes gonna, a, a coach takes a little bit longer. Are we going to comment on Kirk Herbstreit? What did Herbstreit say? I He's, saw that. <laughs> he said that uh, Michigan's going to try to ruin the season for Ohio State and just cancel the game because they, they know they have no chance to win. <laughs> oh, yeah. Then, he, uh, then he apologized. He apologized. <laughs> yeah, he had to issue an apology. All the Michigan fans are going for, for his throat. But, like, he's not uh, Oh, wrong. yeah, I'm sure. He's yeah. Like, but it's no. a game, but Michigan... Earlier this week. Um, they, they hate each they other, but out. it's not that kind of hate each yeah. other. <laughs> ADs did come out and say if Ohio State had to cancel, they would adjust that whole six game minimum because Ohio State's your best bet. So, and I'm like, mm-hmm. kind of shitty for uh, if you're Wisconsin. Wisconsin, like, yeah, yeah, who's hey, been eliminated, and they're like, you're eliminated. Oh well, yeah, you're you're out, you're done. Ohio State, now, Ohio uh, State's now, you know eliminated. What? Hold on, hold on, hold yeah, on. hold on here. Wait one <laughs> sec. All right, so we're gonna take Ohio State across the board on this one. Uh, next up, we got a And M at Auburn. This is going to be one of my upsets this week. On a and or on paper, a and slightly better. But I think after what happened last week with Alabama, Auburn has a fire underneath them to prove they aren't trash. Last week was unlucky, and they're going to come in and get the win. I think it's going to be close, but I think they're going to beat A&M and take them off that top spot. So uh, go Tigers. Um, I'm going to go with a and I know Auburn definitely is looking for a redemption game this week, but I just, I'm not very impressed with their offense this year. I know they had really high expectations going into it with Bo Nix and like having the same offensive uh, scheme as last season. So he had a little bit more time to prepare, but I just, it's not it for me. I don't know what it is. I just think that I had really high expectations and was really hoping for them to do well. So I don't know. I know that they're going to come back firing, and I think it's really going to be a close game. But I'm, I think A and M's got this one. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I think I go with that too, Aaron. Um, the the Bo Nix thing. I was excited. You know, as much as I would like to say, hey, this might be one of those games where uh, he, you know, really has a, a coming out party. But I was I was excited to watch him. I literally the first time I got to watch a live mm-hmm. game um, was against Alabama, and it just just watching the quarterbacks on both sides, you're like, he, he's just getting outplayed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was upsetting. Cause I heard about his name and all that. And I was hoping he could you know, bring back the Cam Newton magic to Auburn, <laughs> but uh did not happen. So I'm, I'm going to go with uh, A&M as well. All right. Socko. The highs and lows of Bo Nix. <laughs> the most inconsistent quarterback in college football, but, um, I think I'm going to take Auburn and Bo Nix this week. Uh, I'm picking against a and And <laughs> this is where I have to check my own personal biases. Do I want them to lose because I think they're going to lose or because I want Cincinnati to leapfrog them? But <laughs> last week, even in a 20-7 to win, they did not look like the number five team. They yeah. marginally outplayed LSU. But 
I think um, Auburn is a better, much better team than LSU this season. And if they play like they did last week, this is Auburn's game to win. All right. Oh, I got a And M. I think it'll be a high-scoring game, and I think that a And M will pull it off. All right. For hey, this is earlier than most weeks where we have people splitting off and not having everyone pick the same game. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up, we got Oklahoma State at TCU. I'm gonna trust in the mullet winning this one yet again. I always trust in him, and he's only let me down twice. Um, both teams are putting up 50 plus points a game, or especially mm-hmm. last week. I think Gundy is going to get it done this week and prove they deserve their ranking in the spots. Yeah, Chubba Hubbard hasn't shown up this year, and their quarterback isn't the best, but I think that they have a defense that is above the rest in the Big 12, which isn't saying much, but they are in the better half of the Big 12 defenses, and they have a above-average offense, and I think that's how they're going to get the win. I'm going to take the Cowboys win this one in a real close game. Yeah, I'm going with the Cowboys, too. I think um, TCU really hasn't had a solid, productive program since Andy Dalton was there, which, you know, that was eons ago. Um, Hey, (laughs) you're throwing shade against my boy Kenny Trill? Oh, yeah, sorry. (laughs) Sorry, my bad. Um, But, yeah, I definitely think Oklahoma State has more talent and a more cohesive team in general, so I'm going with them this week. All right. All right, so I'm going to also take uh, Oklahoma State. We talk a lot about their defense, but it has faltered the last two weeks. The first uh, five games of the season, they were giving up um, less than 15 points per game, I think 11, and they've given up 40 and 45 the uh, last two weeks. I think this is a good game to get back on track against a TCU that ranks towards the bottom of the uh, Big 12 and the Power 5 in general in passing yards per game. I think they have a marginally better run game, but that passing game is going to be shut down as uh, Oklahoma State has probably one of the best secondaries in the Big 12, despite giving up 40-plus points the last two games. Well, best in the Big 12 isn't like a huge accomplishment. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, No, but if you can combine that with a uh, very good offense – Even a marginal defense is the best in the Big 12. So, yeah, (laughs) if you have a slightly good one, that's just that's going to be your key to success to win the Big 12 championship. Yeah. Uh, Brady. Uh, I got Oklahoma State. I said I think it'll be a close game till the second half. So and then Chubba Hubbard will just run all over it. TCU. Everyone, every week, I'm, somebody's I'm picking Shovel Hover to go off and it's still yet to happen. This will <laughs> be the week. This is the week. This will be the week. <laughs> yeah, because none of us mentioned it other than Brady. It's going to happen now. Yeah. And yeah. I, I've, <laughs> stopped, I've stopped saying it. I've learned to, uh, <laughs> to lower my expectations. Mm-hmm. Well, I won't mention it either, but. I am going with Oklahoma State. I'm going to say Oklahoma State because you guys got it sounding like this is an NFL thing saying the Cowboys. But um, <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, they might beat the yeah. actual Cowboys. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go with Oklahoma State just because I mean, even though I don't like the, the high scoring games and all that stuff that the Big 12 has been all about since I've been alive. Um, <laughs> it's 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 something that I think Oklahoma State can they can just they can outscore TCU if it does get out of hand. Uh, they obviously are just more talented. So uh, we're going to go with Oklahoma State. Sorry, TCU. <laughs> yeah. I uh, take an Oklahoma State across the board. All right. Next up, we got West Carolina at UNC. I looked this up. West Carolina has three games this season, and that's it one against Liberty, one against North Carolina, and one against a team I had never heard of. And <laughs> that's it's weird to think that they started so late, they only get three games. But, uh, it's a almost 50 point spread going into today. UNC is going to put up the points. I think this is their chance for their quarterback, um, whose name I'm blanking on right now. Uh, this is going to be his chance, I think, to get back into those Heisman talks that he was in preliminary with Sam Howell. I think this might be his way to get back into those Heisman talks with a huge mm-hmm. win over West Carolina. I'm going to take the Tar Heels winning this one as big as I possibly could. And, uh, yeah, UNC is probably going to run all over them all night, all day. And it's going to be a, it's going to be the game to watch if you just like seeing points. 
Yeah, I was going to say, if you're a defense fan, this is not it. Um, I've never even heard of West Carolina. It basically sounds like Ohio State playing, you know, I don't know. Kent- <laughs> Ashland. 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 Yeah. <laughs> I was going with the community college. I was going to say Kent State Stark or Kent Tusk. Um, But yeah, it definitely gives me one of those vibes where offense, UNC's, their talent is just going to show and shine through in this game. and They're going to run all over West Carolina. Andrew's throwing shade against the uh, Eastern Kentucky Colonels. (laughs) That was the uh, Western Carolina's third team they played. All right. So, yeah, I'm taking UNC. They looked good against Notre Dame. Uh, they weren't able to get the job done. But in that first half, they were neck and neck. They were tied 17 going in the half. And they are a good team. They're not w- up there where they were ranked at the start of the season, you know, top 10. We were all saying they were overranked. But I, I'm comfortable where they are now, and I still think they're the better team. This is going to be a blowout. We're going to watch UNC put up points. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna take North Carolina. Uh, like, uh, not North. Wait, North Carolina. Right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I think that they kept the Notre Dame game close, and I think it'll be an easy win for them this week. All right. Yeah, I'm. I'm gonna pick UNC. Um, I'm just. I uh, Michael Carter, that dude. He was. Obviously, they didn't really win against Notre Dame or anything, but I just love watching him carry the rock and the way he's. I just love watching dudes who can make people miss, and uh, <laughs> he reminded me a little bit of Shady McCoy. Obviously, not on that level, but um, mm-hmm. just the way he runs. Yes, I love it. He's got a little bit more more power. Obviously, Shady's more finesse, but he also <laughs> got some moves. I, I liked yeah. watching him against Notre Dame's defense, and uh, but yeah, UNC. And and I have had I have heard of West Carolina. They've got it's almost like uh, Michigan because Michigan's got Michigan, Eastern Michigan, Central Michigan, Western Michigan. Oh yeah, yeah. Carolina's got all the Carolinas. So yeah, they got NC State, Duke, <laughs> UNC, and then West Carolina's like also there. Yeah, then they got East Carolina too. It's crazy. Coastal so, Carolina. Yeah, coastal. coastal Carolina. Do not forget about coastal. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be easy win for UNC this week. All right. Uh, next up, we got Rice at Marshall. Uh, Marshall is having an amazing year on defense, and it seems like it is almost next to impossible to put points up on him. They're putting only allowing an average around 10 points on defense, and that is astounding stat to have with who they're playing. Yeah, it's not as a power five, but this is the year for the group of five to shine and show that they're playing just as good a game as everyone else. Um, I think that that killer defense is going to be your key to victory and continued success over the next couple of years. I don't think they mm-hmm. get into year six, which I think that they need to acknowledge more of the group of five in, but they're going to get a good bowl game. They're going to win it. And I think this is going to carry on some success for the next couple of years. And we're going to see some shades of Marshall that we haven't seen in a long time. I'm going to take the herd winning this one in a low score, but it's definitely going to be one side on Marshall's side. Yeah, I definitely think Marshall is the most disrespected non-Power 5 school that's doing really, really well this year. Like, no one is talking about them on the same level as, um, like, Cincinnati, BYU, or Coastal, yet they've done great all year long, and they've just consistently been getting better. Um, I think Marshall has this one this week as well, but I'm excited to see if they get a decent bowl game at the end of the year. Mm -hmm. I'm taking Marshall. I think it'll be pretty easy. Um, They're going on their eighth game and Rice is one and two going on their fourth. I think the experience and just being a better team in general gets them the win. But, you know, this, Andrew, you said Shades of Marshall we haven't seen in a while. Two, three years ago, they were undefeated with Raheem Cato as a dark runner or a dark horse Heisman. Yeah, I guess. But I'm, I'm getting they, that we are here before they know we are how to Marshall, take care like old school Marshall kind of vibe that punching the mouth kind of defense that we saw back in the day. Oh, that's what you're talking. I'm not, yeah. you're not speaking to their success. Just yeah. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking that movie We Are Marshall with Matthew McConaughey. Wonderful movie. I, <laughs> I'm I'm still saddened by the loss that Marshall had, and this being the 50th anniversary of that happening, I think that that is something that is carrying them through some of these games is remembering. That 50 years ago, mm-hmm. tragedy hit that team. Building on the legacy then, of the yeah, program. Building on that legacy they had where they overcame such big tra- tragedy 
and we're successful. And I think that that is why I'm kind of getting that shade now that this is a team that everyone's sleeping on. No one wants to respect. And mm-hmm. they, they kind of want to prove a point. We are still a great team. And this is the 50th anniversary. This is what we're playing for. And they want to win big every week. It is a shame that they don't get the um, discussion that even a coastal gets because Marshall's been here before. They're generally a top 20 ish team and coastal. I mean, that's just an aberration from what they're usually are. So everyone talks about them, BYU, everyone talks about them because they are a bigger program. And so far they've been a little disrespected. And then Cincinnati is generally also around that top 25 they've been as high as three before so yeah Yeah. Uh, i'm gonna take marshall i think they've looked pretty solid this year and i think they'll end the season i don't know all right Mm -hmm. yeah um as you guys talked about you know cincinnati and stuff that they've been the the most surprising team to me but uh you know marshall they had uh, one of their coaches right after the tragedy was uh, Stan Marsh, Stan Marshall, Stan Parrish uh, was my quarterback mm-hmm. coach at college at Ball State and was also Tom Brady's quarterback coach when he was at Michigan. Oh, wow. Oh, so you're yeah. good as Tom Brady. Got it. Yes. Yes. I'm better. Yep. More, athle- more athletic for sure. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that mouth gets in your son. So you're already better than Tom Brady. I would I'm sure you could take him in a 40. Michigan. That's already a better start. Than yeah. Tom Brady. Like- <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I know exactly what Andrew's referring to, but I also just remember the 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 era the era us that have came before with the the Randy Moss, the Chad Pennington, the Byron Left, which is those are those are mm-hmm. the, the fun times. But yeah, you haven't really heard Marshall's name lately. Obviously, they did have the undefeated season that I was not aware of. So thanks for that, John. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, well, regular yeah. season, I I believe they lost the bowl game, but Ra- Raheem Cato well, was the truth that season. Well, I count that as undefeated season because at Ball State, when I was there, we uh, had an undefeated <laughs> regular season and then lost both the uh, oh, uh, yeah. MAC championship mm-hmm. and bowl games. So we were counting that as undefeated. But uh, I will take Marshall as well. I agree with Brady. I don't know. Yeah. All mm-hmm. right. Uh, next up, we got Syracuse and Notre Dame. This game is going to be ugly if you're a Syracuse fan. Notre Dame's already locked into the ACC championship. And I think right now you're playing for the highlight reel. You're wanting that spot that Alabama has right now. And you're going to be going for big plays and high scores and probably be up so much you can have your starters out by half because Mm. you want to take Bama's number one spot. That's going to give you the easiest route to the national championship. Um, But yeah, I think right now you're, you right now are already looking ahead to, are are we going to play Clemson? Are we going to play the U? This game is just put up big plays that's all we're doing. We're going to try and be the entire highlight reel on Sports Center this week. I'm going to take the Fighting Irish win in this one. I'm going with Notre Dame too. I honestly don't understand why Ian Book isn't like the front one of the front runners for the Heisman this year. He's done phenomenal. Um, I understand though that he's a seasoned vet. He's in his, I believe, last year there. But um, I still think that he has a lot of talent and he's shown up in the big games and the big games are where the Heisman winners, you know, distinguish themselves. So I think that Notre Dame's got the win easy today against Syracuse, but I do think Ian Book needs a little bit more respect this season. Ian Book is second in Notre Dame records, rapidly uh, gaining on Brady Quinn there. So very likely by the end of the season he could pass him I don't know if that warrants Heisman contender I mean he should be in the conversation I don't know front runner but I think he gets the job done today he continues to build that um his legacy at Notre Dame and I think it's Notre Dame they don't care about an ACC championship (laughs) they've never cared about conference championships they're playing for the playoff right now and it's easy to think that they would take the foot off the gas already being locked in, but they're, they're looking beyond that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take Notre Dame. I think Syracuse just looks terrible this year. It'll be an easy one for Notre Dame. All right. Um, yeah, speaking about Ian Book, I feel like he's super focused this year. I mean, if you guys look it up, I think he's a graduate student, so I don't know mm-hmm. <laughs> what students he's really yeah. classes. <laughs> 
he's taking. He might be on that Matt Leinart schedule that <laughs> Matt Leinart mm. had his last season at USC. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm kind of impressed. Um, uh, and I know I say that just be, to take shots at my brother-in-law because he's obsessed with Notre Dame and has forced the Irish oh, love yeah. on all of his kids. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he's he's he might have some bragging rights this year going in. I always try to bring up Ball State, but obviously. Uh, Notre Dame is the better team in Indiana. <laughs> mm. I'm taking Notre Dame this week. All right. Uh, next up, we got West Virginia at Iowa State. Um, I'm going to lock this one in, take the bet to the bank. West Virginia is going to close out this game as a winner. They have an actual defense in the Big 12 if you look at it. They're only allowing around 280 yards a game on defense, not allowing a ton of points. And I think that is your key to success in any Big 12 game is having a defense that can – have success and stop points because that is all the Big 12 is good for is an offense that puts up points. So um, a few country roads, give me a big Mountaineer win on the road. I think West Virginia gets this one in a very close game, but they're going to win it. Yeah, I've been impressed with um, West Virginia this year, but I'm going to pick the Cyclones. I think they've been super inconsistent though. That's So this is a very risky pick in my opinion because they show up in a big game and then all of a sudden they don't show up for another three weeks um so sorry guys <laughs> she's yeah. bobbing and weaving trying to she wants to be in there yeah, yeah. Larry just wants to play and that everyone's <laughs> super sweet but um she just wants to play and not talk about the sport <laughs> anyway, yeah. I'm going to Iowa State <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm also taking Iowa State I think they're overranked at nine but um I buy them as contenders. West Virginia or contenders for the Big 12. I mean, not football playoff, but um, <laughs> West Virginia's already had an upset win over Texas. I don't think they get another one. All right. All right. Uh, this is one of my two upsets of the week. I'm going to take West Virginia. I think that West Virginia's look pretty solid this year, and I think it'll be close, and the Mount- Mountaineers will win it. I'm, I'm going to go with uh, Iowa State. I think – um, they want to get, I know they, they want to prove that they're a top tier team, but obviously I don't think they have a shot in the playoff either, but I think they want to finish the season with, you know, one of the better records that they can. I think it's almost like us at ball state when we were, you know, towards the end, we were just trying to get ranked as high as possible. We knew we had no chance to get into the playoffs. We did mm-hmm. get ranked 12th though. And I'm sorry. I keep talking about ball state. I don't know. We're going to get, nah, there. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but I'm, I'm going to stick with Iowa state this week. All right. Uh, next up, we got Florida at Tennessee. Florida has a genuine shot at possibly dethroning Alabama as the champs of the SEC with Kyle Trask putting up mm-hmm. amazing Heisman stats against probably the hardest opponents out of anyone in the Heisman talks right now. I know Zach Wilson is putting up great numbers, but he is also playing a bit of an easier schedule. As where Trask is putting up very similar numbers against much harder teams. I think that this is a, this is your win to get before your SEC championship game against Alabama. I think they win it with ease. I think that right now you're going, all right, win this one out, try and put up some big numbers, stay healthy, keep the starters out after half, and be worried about Alabama whenever that game comes and try and beat them. So I'm going to give the Gator Chomp and a Florida win. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going with Florida too. Trask has looked really good this season. Uh, he's definitely my front runner for the Heisman at this point. Um, and I don't really think Tennessee has been super relevant in the SEC. I don't know, really in my lifetime. Um, <laughs> so I think Florida's got this one easy. I don't know if we should start talking about them maybe beating Alabama. That might be a little premature. But they're, I think, going to be the only team that gives them a run for the money this year. All right. All right. I'm also taking Florida. Their stock is rapidly rising for me. I am buying them more and more every week. Kyle Trask looks to be better and better. I hesitant to say I may take them over in Alabama. And I pose this question, if they beat in Alabama, would that mean to you two SEC teams, two ACC teams in the playoff? I don't know about that. That's that's because it all depends on if the ACC does go one and one with Clemson winning theirs. Mm-hmm. Let's say Notre Dame does win Assuming both, yeah. that Clemson would beat a Notre Dame. Yeah, with, with Trevor Lawrence healthy and they both go one and one and you have 
four. So you have four teams: mm-hmm. two SEC, two ACC, with one loss. Bumping one out a each losing five, championship or, game. Or a yeah. Seven win Ohio State. It is tough. Yeah, I would take. I would take that. Ohio State needs a better resume for me to take them in that situation. I agree, sadly, that. But I think <laughs> if Florida wins and Clemson wins their championship games, it has to be two ACC, two SEC. It has to be. There's mm-hmm. I, there literally is no argument for Ohio State to be in there, yeah. other than the fact that they'd be undefeated against a super simple and easy schedule and a mm-hmm. not even full schedule. Like, yeah, it would hurt a lot, <laughs> and I would be very yeah. sad. <laughs> yeah, but. Yeah. I don't, I don't see Ohio State making it in if that's what happens. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to take Florida. I think Kyle Trask is going to go off and maybe be the next top one. Yeah, looking at that Ohio State 4, no, it just doesn't look like it's going to fit up there at the top much longer. Um, <laughs> yeah, it is, but... it is harder and harder to pick them <laughs> for the championship. Yeah, but uh, I am excited to, to see what numbers uh, Kyle Trask puts up this week. Um, he's obviously been impressive and, uh, you know, I'm just excited to see, I'm taking Florida, but I'm excited to see what type of, you know, I don't want it to get out of hand where I'm turning the game <laughs> off, but <Yeah. laughs> I want Tennessee to put up a fight somewhat. So Florida can keep scoring. Uh, I don't want it to be like Maslin, how they took it easy on us in the second half when I was playing football. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah. I'll take a Florida as well. All right, so last time, before we pick the next game, Florida had a Heisman contender. It was Tim Tebow. And if you don't remember, some of the other people on that team included Maurice Pouncey, uh, Percy Harvin, Riley Cooper, Brandon Spikes, Urban Meyer, Aaron Hernandez. This is a team. Last time they had Hayden on that team? Ah, He may have been. I'm not sure. But, yeah, last time they had a Heisman quarterback – the team was filled with controversy. So I'm, I'm worried mm-hmm. that like there might be some stuff coming out of the next five years that like somebody on their offensive line, like stabbed a guy in a bark. I don't know. Oh like, my God. You, I mean, Riley Cooper turned out to be like really, really racist. <laughs> Percy Harvin was smoking dope for every game. Aaron Hernandez killed a guy. <laughs> Both the Allegedly got arrested. Three yeah. The pounds. Yeah. Got Cause Percy Harvin's so, the only person who smokes. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, Percy Harvin is not the only one that smoked. He's the only one that got caught smoking. That's that's Percy Harvin that. making a comeback. You think? I, I hope know. So. Maybe. I kind of want to so. stop uh, marijuana testing. Yeah. Now the that's NBA true. stopped marijuana testing. No, the NFL has too. Oh, now. the NFL did too. Yeah. Oh man. Uh-oh. Josh Gordon, number one receiver for as long Josh as Gordon that just got reinstated as of last night. Yeah. Yeah, Josh Gordon is now the number one receiver until they go and <laughs> test him again. <laughs> All right. All right. So next up, we got Indiana at Wisconsin. I think Wisconsin sees that news about Ohio State possibly getting an exception to that six game rule, and they are pissed. Um, I think that that gets you fired up. I think that you have a great quarterback and a system that got just got unlucky with cancellations that definitely would be a higher rank had they gotten to play. But, um, this is a game I think Indiana may be in over their head right now and getting two back two games that they aren't ready for in a very short time span. But uh, Graham Mertz, I think, is a Heisman sleeper. I think had he played more games, he'd be up for it. But there's always next year for him. I'm going to take the Badgers winning this one big in a statement game saying, hey, if you're going to make the exception for Iowa State, you better make the exception for us. Um, I'm going to go with Wisconsin as well, but not for the sense of they're mad. I think that they just have more talent and a better coaching staff and organization than Indiana does. So I also expect more from them. Um, I don't, I honestly don't know how you can make the argument that Wisconsin should be in the big 10 championship. Like they've just missed so many games and they're not undefeated i believe they've lost a game so yeah, they lost North what are they two and one three and two and one, three yeah. and two and one two and one so yeah. i don't i don't know if they can be angry and upset and like demand to be in the big 10 championship like even well, if i they- think it's more upset with hey we had five we only have five games and you labeled us ineligible and ohio state's at risk of that and they say well if ohio state has five 
will change to rule up and it's i know they have one loss yeah. and it was northwestern but yeah mm -hmm. it is one where they still would be the best team in the big 10 west and still would have that spot had they not had to miss so many games so i think this is one where it, the statement exists in you're going to bend the rules for Ohio state but not for us even though we are the best in the west they may not That's be typical. the best in the big 10 but they are the best in the west and they want that spot Ohio State that, always gets baby. Yeah. Ohio State does. Oh, yeah. And every issue that Ohio State ever has, it's because of someone else. That's why I said the other day, the reason why Ohio State had all their COVID tests, I'm blaming it on Maryland, not on Ohio State. Because <laughs> if Maryland hadn't been healthy, Ohio State would have played and those guys wouldn't have gone out and tested mm -hmm. awesome. Yeah. So it's not Ohio State's fault ever. It's always someone else. That's the <laughs> rule number one. Um, but no. Rule of thumb. Yeah, that's basically what you do when you talk about Ohio State. But um, no, I just... I don't under like I understand for Big Ten purposes like that it would be better for like a harder matchup game in the Big Ten championship and Wisconsin is pretty good out in the West, but I think the reason why they're talking about giving Ohio State that exemption or whatever is because that would be the only team they'd have in the college football playoff and the Big Ten will get money for having a team in the college football playoff. Yeah, and the world revolves around money and sports revolves around money, so. You can't really fault Ohio State for being good. You just have yeah. to fault the Big Ten for not building a proper schedule. Yeah. Otherwise, we'd never have this issue in the first place. Yeah. Agree. All right. All right. So I, I'm taking Wisconsin. Simple fact, Indiana is without Michael Penix Jr. You know, that is going to be a big – Their quarterback has been the reason they are up there where they are right now. And without him, before him – they don't fall back to irrelevancy, but they did not crack the top half of the um, Big Ten in terms of offense. The, what they have left is a very good defense that is very good in uh, creating turnovers, though. But yeah. I don't – they're going up against Graham Mertz, who, as you said, very likely next year could be a Heisman contender. In fact, in the first two weeks of the season, I thought he may be the contender pre – postponements and cancellations but I think he will have a good game if anyone in the Big Ten right now could pick apart that Indiana defense it would be Graham Mertz I feel yeah Brady uh I'm gonna take Wisconsin I think Graham Mertz is showing that he should be a person to watch every single game so I think Wisconsin will blow Indiana out of the water all right yeah, it's hard to to go against Wisconsin here just because of the simple fact of that that ACL um, of of Phoenix, and it's I hate to see those injuries. Um, you know, once we get, and we might have to jump to the Ball State one. My daughter's yelling at me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, seeing season any injuries to a team's best player is never it's never what you want to see, especially as a sports fan. Um, and a lot of these people are like, oh, well, you know, it's sports, it's life. But a lot of these kids, they dedicate their life to this sport and to this, this school. They're, trust me, being a college football player is more than a full-time job. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why I went to baseball. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, I see Wisconsin taking this. All right. Uh, yeah, that is something. You always hope for a speedy recovery for these guys. Luckily, the program is helping them re rehabilitate and hopefully get back into it. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. that's something that's, it's always tough to see that these guys are working essentially two full-time jobs and trying to be a college student. And it's, it's one where, yeah, there's always the asterisk. Oh yeah. They don't go to class. They don't do anything. Percy, what was your degree in? Computer technology, but. Okay. So you actually went to class. <laughs> we, yeah. Ball state. You had to. Yeah. Ball they, state didn't were, give you tutors. <laughs> you know, it called, uh, some people did. I would say, you know, one or two people had tutors because they actually struggled. But mm -hmm. our coaches were at our classes. I got, I was good at attendance. There was one time I was going to be late. The coach called me. He's like, you better get down here or you're going to have a 6 a.m. And you don't want 6 a.m. at Ball State. So they were they were um, on your tail and they made you go to class. Yeah. But, yeah, there is always that stigma of that. And I, I do hope that with rehabilitation, he's able to recover and the school is able to help him out. But, yeah, yeah. Um, so you said you might not, you might have to get off soon. <laughs> yeah, she's yelling. I'm glad it didn't. All right. I'm, this is when a dynamic mic pays off because she was just yelling and you couldn't hear. All right. So uh, 
We'll pick the uh, Ball State game. We'll pick your alma mater, and we'll let you get off, and we'll pick the rest yeah, of the game. Yeah, because they're in the top 25, right? Oh, no. They are oh, not. Okay. No. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's the Mac school. Come on. Come on, man. Hey, 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 hey. Hey, I Watch went to Akron mouth. and no. Kent. They ain't great. <laughs> we are a very just, Mac positive program yeah, here. Yeah, we are a Mac positive show. Uh, I got All you. All right, so uh, we got Ball State <laughs> at like- Central Michigan. Yeah, yeah. Aaron has a whole family that went to uh, Bowling Green. Yeah, so mm. even the like Mac schools that no one really paid attention to are likes. You know, yeah. we we show love all the way around. Yeah, you know? yeah. My girlfriend <laughs> went to OU. Yeah, we are very Mac positive. Gotcha. Nice. Uh, so yeah, we we got Ball State at Central Michigan. Percy, this is all your mater. You're all a mater, and I think you might be upset and maybe kick my ass if I pick against you with you being the special <laughs> guest, and I'm just gonna pick against your school. That being said. Ball State does look like the better team in this week, so I'm going to take them winning this. I didn't get to look at the game a whole lot. Mm-hmm. It just looks on paper. Ball State is the better team. They did pick Percy Gardner as one of their recruits, so I kind of question him on that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I'm going to take the Cardinals winning it this week. Um, they're playing – who are they playing this week? Central, Central, Central Michigan. Michigan. Yeah, I was say I thought I – mean, <laughs> Michigan's supposed to be decent in the MAC this year. No. Like – Oh, I was saying nobody I'm not- looks decent in the Mac this year. <laughs> I'm talking competition of the Mac. Like, yeah, no that one- doesn't exist they're, they're either. Both three and one, they're relatively. Both three and one. Right. Yeah. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Like in the Mac, they look good. Not necessarily in football against anyone else. Against the competition, right? Um, so I, I'm sad because I like Percy and I have like I, Mariah Monaco. She's from Dover. She went to yeah, Ball State as well. True, you know. True. I, I own two different Ball State basketball shirts. I almost wore one. <laughs> they just rubbed it. Oh, but man. I gotta, go with, I gotta go with Central Michigan. <clears throat> oh. mm. Even after what Antonio Brown has been doing. No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, he was a student for what, like four weeks? Four weeks, yeah. <laughs> Left the NFL, what became a student for like, I feel bad for his lab partner. They'd be like, oh, man, Antonio Brown. Yeah, I'm doing all the work now. <laughs> I'm doing all the work. All right. Yeah, both teams are three and one. You have Western Michigan there who's uh, undefeated. So this is the battle to um, pr- try to um, catch up here. And I, I, both teams are very evenly matched, I think. And I'm t- I'll am take Central Michigan just on the fact um, one of their better players has recently graduated. And I think without a Percy Gardner type player there, I don't see how you can overcome a Central Michigan. <laughs> You know, I play like two snaps there, right? <laughs> and it's two more than any of us have ever played. Yeah. We kiss enough fast, maybe we get you back on the show. Gotcha, I gotcha. Listen, team dynamic and leadership on the team counts too. You got true, to yeah, true. I, I gave good There's signals from the sideline. There's a whole bunch of signals on behind the scenes that no one yeah, really sees on the Yeah, he was the best field. redshirt freshman they've ever had. Exactly. I, I, I do take – I take Ball State, though. I think they come out. All right. Okay, okay, okay. like it. All right, I'm going to try to – Make sure I'm on Percy's good side, so I'm gonna take Ball State. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, you're pitching coach. You better be on his good side. I'm a big bully. Y'all I'm are bullying. all leaving me out to the wolves. Damn. Yeah, yeah, you gotta kiss the rings, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, well, doesn't have any um, rings. Don't worry. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, this one, uh, I will say, I'm gonna bring up some history because you know, back when I was at Ball State, uh, Central had some. At the time, we didn't know they were going to be what they are, but, you know, they had Dan LaFever, uh, Antonio Brown, and an mm. offensive J.J. Watt, which that story in itself is weird. But uh, <laughs> he obviously left Central and became, you know, one of the Who best offensive now, players yeah. ever. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I always thought that, you know, Central was one of our, our better games every year, uh, and we traded blows. And – their program has been has been well when I was there, and then they had a couple of good teams after I left. <clears throat> but uh, the last five meetings between these teams is has been very close. I think decided, you know, by one score. But if you take Ball State schedule as a whole, the nine out of their last twelve games have all been one score, and I think all the games this year have all been close. So, um, even though Antonio Brown is who he is, I got to mention this. You know, one of my favorite players in, in college football history was Dante Love. He played for Ball State. Before he broke his neck, he was leading the nation in all-purpose yards, and he was our 
best player on Ball State. And uh, no one knew at the time Antonio Brown was going to turn into what he is. But <laughs> um, but I will have to go with Ball State here. Um, even though Drew, uh, the quarterback there, Drew Plitt, he hasn't had the, the good the season that he had last year. I think he's going to step up. And then, you know, Ball State's always been the team who can run the ball. So uh, I think they're going to win. That long-winded answer. You know. All right. Hey, <laughs> hey, give us a great story <laughs> from it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you for joining us this week. I know you got the kids to take care of. Hopefully yeah. it ain't too much of a handful today. But, yeah, thank you so much for joining us this week. Give another yeah. round of applause to Percy Gardner. I appreciate you guys Wonderful having, having me. you on the show. Yeah, hope, hope we can, can have you on the show soon. again sometime. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see. You might have to, uh, you know, give me some type of stipend or – have your dad make, make your have your now dad make me that this? <laughs> have your dad uh make me some type of uh what's that meal he's good at is it lasagna or what is it? oh no that is not him that makes a good no, lasagna. That's my mom. oh that's travis no no Jeff makes good lasagna i oh, okay, try okay. and get him to make like some pulled pork or something in the smoker that's okay. that's the thing uh, right something there. in the smoker okay that'll work that'll work or that'll some work. baked mac and cheese Okay, and and get them back in our in our uh our small group at church. All right. So. <laughs> but, all right, guys. I appreciate you guys having me. What you guys are doing is great. I love it. And uh, you know, you guys are out here grinding. Look at John in his car, making sure. You know, I should <laughs> make sure my I'm car, here. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, good luck with all this, and uh, uh, appreciate it. And you know, I don't know what else you guys got. You guys got talking about what the the lack of fans and games and all that stuff coming. Oh uh, yeah, we got to get yeah, the, rest we'll, of the picks we'll in. Hit news after picks. We wanted to make sure we got picks in with you here. Okay, yeah. I appreciate it. All right, well I'll see you guys. Yep. All right, we'll see you. Bye. Bye. See ya. All right, so next game we got, um, we got Iowa at Illinois. Iowa has to be the better defense today to win this game because both offensively, they, they need a change up at play caller. Mm-hmm. Um, they don't have that leader at quarterback. They both look at their, their touchdown to interceptions are very similar. They're completing not a lot of passes. And this is a game where your defense is going to have to win you the game for you because your quarterback's not going to do it. Your running back's not going to do it. You are going to have to have turnovers and help them with field position. So in this, I'm going to take Iowa to win it mm-hmm. in probably a game where both teams stay under 20. But yeah, I'm going to take the Hawkeyes winning this one close. Yeah, I don't really think either team has like the dynamic, a dynamic offense or anything this year. So I don't think it's going to be a super high scoring game either. Um, I'm, I'm going to go with Illinois though. Uh, I don't know why. I think I've always just kind of had a vibe with Illinois this season. They've, kind of surprised me because I thought they were going to literally have no win. Um, so yeah, you know, underdog status, right? Yeah. I think this is a battle of the defenses. Like you said, um, Illinois offense, they're middling and, um, Iowa's offense. They have no action. They have no leader of that offense. I think this, if Lovey Smith is, poor as Illinois it has been if he knows one thing it's how to coach a defense those Chicago Bears defenses were great and even Illinois defense without the talent of the premier schools in the Big Ten has finished very well in terms of defense and I think um I lost my train of thought I I think um that's enough to get it done I think Illinois can take the upset all right uh, I'm going to go with Iowa. I think that the games they've lost, it was close, and the games they've won, they've won big. So I think that this would be a big win for them. So I got Iowa. Yeah. Yeah, so we're all predicting this not be a, a, an amazing game. This is no. probably going to be your filter game between good games. Maybe turn it on. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, all right, but, yeah, next up we got Tulsa at Navy. Um, I don't have much to say on this game. I really think this is going to be the game where you go on your beer run between games you're going to go make your dinner you're going to go use the bathroom don't be disrespecting I, the golden I'm hurricane not, i'm not trying to disrespect the golden hurricanes in this one i do have them winning but this does not look like it'll be a good game now the team has a very um dynamic offense not a great defense this is going to just be one of those games that 
Tulsa got the rank, so we're going to talk about them, but I don't know who – I Tulsa will win it close, maybe, hopefully. It's not going to be a good game. I can tell you that for sure. It's not going to be the game to watch this week, um, but I'm, I am going to take Tulsa winning. I do think they are slightly better. I'm going to go with Tulsa, too. I don't know if you could argue it's not going to be a good game. It might just be, you know, a sloppy game. It might be a close game. Yeah, that's more what I mean. Like, yeah, it's not going to be your big plays on offense and defense. It's just kind of going to be your run of the mill. Kind of. Yeah, it's going to be tooth, tooth and nail. What is it? Nose to the grindstone or something yeah. like that kind of game. Um, whatever team can like take advantage of the mistakes and turnovers is who I think is going to win. I'm going with Tulsa. All right. I'm going Tulsa. I think this is, I think this is going to be a good game. I think your headphones are on too tight, cutting (laughs) off some blood to your brain. Navy is a team that does not throw the ball unless they need to. They're a very run first triple option team. This is a, a Tulsa's defense is good. I this is especially a game where a lot of running occurs. This is a game where your linebackers are going to shine in a star in the conference, probably maybe defensive player of the year in the conference. No, Cincinnati's winning. Any Cincinnati players winning that. But a star like Zavin Collins will have a great game. He is the anchor of that defense. And I think this is a game where he comes out and – shows what he can do he puts on a redshirt junior he's looking towards the nfl all right uh i got tulsa i think it'll be close but tulsa will pull it off yeah and i'm not trying to disrespect the american i don't know it's just i haven't seen a whole lot great on tulsa navy looking at them statistically isn't gonna be great i do think army navy will be a good game because for some reason that is always an amazing game regardless of Mm -hmm. how the teams are doing but yeah this game didn't stand out to me it's a 25th ranked against a team that's uh, at the 500 mark. Mm-hmm. It's it's one that I think people would pass over in normal circumstances. And that's why I am labeling it as the go get a beer, go make a mm-hmm. go. It's just one that I don't think is very, it's not a high risk. I, game. I think it's every Tulsa game's be, exciting. I yeah, think, it could be a, I mean, it could be a, an exciting an game. It could be boring. ended with a, hail, a 40 yard Hail Mary with their third yeah. string quarterback. Week one, you had a nail biter against Oklahoma state. They held them to 11 points. Yeah. So it could be big. It could not be it. I'm just seeing it as it might not, it might not be the game. Everyone wants to watch on TV. You think differently, Mm -hmm. but yeah, I, for me personally, this is the one where it's like, all right, I'm going to take my break now. Power five bias coming into it. Honestly. Uh, Honestly. No, honestly. um, (laughs) No, I think that's what it is because just because they're not the premier football schools doesn't mean that they're not good and their games aren't competitive yeah oh i'm not saying any of these games aren't going to be competitive i do think that yeah it's tulsa is going we're a group of group of five team we got a rank we need to work even harder than everyone else that's what every group of five team is probably thinking right now we have to work twice as hard as these power five schools even of the underdog of the small school so i think people are showing a lot more love and a lot more attention like granted you know, I'm not like a Tulsa stan. Woohoo, go Tulsa. They're my favorite. Like, I'm not on that wave at all. But, you know, I do think that people are finally starting to pay attention to the smaller schools. Granted, no one really cares who's number 25 because they're basically yeah. in and out every other week. Um, mm. But I do think that people are finally starting to pay attention. And I think if it's a close game like today, or at least I think today's going to be a good game. Um, people will want to turn it on and watch. Yeah. All right. Um, so next up, we got Stanford at Washington. After getting blown off by BYU last week, I think Washington's coming into this game to kind of show BYU, hey, it's a good thing you decided to not play us because we would have kicked your ass. I think that this is a game where you are – you're the best chance for the Pac-12 to get a decent bowl game at this point. You're the only undefeated team left, and it is do or die, and I think they they will step up. I think Washington, mm-hmm. they had Jacob Easton last year who went to the Colts and is now the third string. That was, that was very good last year. I'm excited to see what they bring for the future. Stanford has always been kind of on the fence since the uh, Andrew Luck era. And I do think that this game is going to be close, 
a bit closer than I'm betting Washington would like, but um, it's going to be one, I think. Um, it could be good. It could be nothing. I think that we're going to see more of the Oklahoma or not um, Oregon, Oregon State kind of game where it's going to be a big score. And, uh, but I do think Washington comes out on top and they really want to prove to BYU that BYU was smart to not take the game because they would have been handed a loss. Yeah, but I feel like you're forgetting that Christian McCaffrey went to Stanford. You said that they haven't been. Stanford? Been... Yeah. Yeah, McCaffrey went to St- – so did was... Bryce Love. Bryce Love was a Heisman contender. Yeah. I, they were, I, I could have swore they, they, they went they were somewhere out east. Stanford was, like, ranked really no. high, and I think it's because you also very much like the Colts. Um, yeah. I, I think it's because they didn't have – they weren't top 25 teams. Their teams yeah. didn't have a lot of success, but both of them were yeah, I very just, good. I, even I thought, yeah, I, I could have swore that McCaffrey was out east. I thought he was that, in that's on me. Wisconsin. Yeah, yeah I, I could have swore he was in somewhere in the east. His brother, Christian McCaffrey's brother, I believe, goes to Wisconsin. But, um, oh, yeah. Yeah, but he went to Stanford because it was a really big deal because Stanford is still on quarters and he was not able to participate in OTAs with his team when he was drafted because he was still taking classes. Hmm. And that's against like the transition policy. So, yeah, that, that's the only reason why I remember that one. Like, okay. This, <laughs> but regardless, that has nothing to do with today's game. Um, I think that the pack is just kind of floundering and they have been for in football for the past few seasons um i don't really think the pack is going to have anyone super competitive this year washington is their best hope but their best hope i don't think is even going to make a new year six bowl game but um you know i think i think washington is going to win it but Stanford has had a really big history of recruiting good guys and having Mm -hmm. competitive guys go to the nfl as well so I think that's something that you're going to be able to watch today's game. I think you might fall in love with one or two Stanford players and be like, that's someone you need to keep an eye on because they're going to be big later. So I think that'll be something good, but I'm going with Washington overall. All right. I think Washington and Stanford are narratively two middling Pac-12 teams. They're not the pr- – not in terms of record or anything right now, but in terms of prestige, you know, you have the the USC's, the Oregon's have been up there. The UC, even UCLA, despite their um, struggles recently are still one of the premier teams in the conference. They play USC. That's a big game. That's still a rivalry. Everyone gets excited for. And I think after you have a star player graduate, think of uh, Jacob Eason last year, who was a Heisman contender, for Washington and Andrew Luck, who was a Heisman contender for Stanford. If you, after you have them, they take your program to success. They took um, Washington to the college football playoff. Stanford had an undefeated record under um, Andrew Luck. So what you can do after those star pl- pr- eh, players leave your program, if you can continue to build off that success, it defines where you are as a program. We see Stanford hasn't done that well post Andrew Luck, but we'd see that Washington is doing they're undefeated this season after Eason. We'll see if that continues, but I think Washington is doing a better job building their program right now. And I think Washington takes a win today to continue building that program okay. to maybe reach the elite teams, the prestigious teams in the Pac-12, the levels of the USC's. But do you think the prestigious teams of the Pac-12 are really that good? Or do you think that they have a historic program? Because, like, to me, USC, UCLA, those sort of schools, they haven't been football schools as long as I can remember that have been great. Yeah. Like, they've been good. They've been maybe, like, 10, ranked 10, 15, that kind of range. But mm. not, not, like – the premier and in our lifetime i feel like washington has been up there and so so is stanford like with Mm. being the best teams in the pack but with history it's about continued success and yeah yeah Yeah. usc obviously through the 2000s was an amazing team and ucla before that was the team and it's about building a history and currently washington is below them in terms of history but 
you know, every dog has their day. Every every team, no matter who you are, will get a standout recruit that builds, that puts their program on the map. It's how you stay on the map that matters. Yeah. And I think Washington is doing a better job than Stanford has. Stanford was the team for a while. They were the best in the Big 12 or the uh, Pac-12. And we see right now, last year, they were four and seven. This year, they're 500. Yeah. All right. So you're taking Washington. All right, Brady. Yeah. Uh, I'm not Washington. I think it'll be a blowout. And I think Washington won by 20. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, next up, we got the other big Pac-12 game of today. Uh, Oregon at Cal. After last week's close game, Oregon showed flashes of an amazing team. Yes, they did end up losing to Oregon State, but there was a great team there. And I think that if they can take that team and have it play throughout, they easily could take back the Pac-12 from Washington. But I, it all depends on if they can have that great team show up every week for the next three weeks, which is not great because you're already on a shortened schedule and you can't have any mistakes. But I think they need to take a page out of the Deion Sanders playbook. And uh, if you look good, you feel good. And if you feel good, you play good. And Oregon always, you know, they go all the way up to 11 with the uh, <laughs> uniforms. And you know, come on, like, take, but take the play. Does that mean they look good? Or they, does it uh, like flash? If you look good, you play they good. Aren't you play good. good looks, though. Like, sometimes yeah. they aren't good uniforms. I think this this is going to be the week where they're going to look good and they're going to play good. I'm going to take the Ducks winning this. And we're going to see that good team that we saw throughout that Oregon game that did have its missteps. I think we're going to see more of that great team that we saw last week. Yeah, I think Oregon went into this season with a lot of pressure, um, especially because, like, they lost their quarterback, but they were still ranked. <laughs> super duper high this year um so they went into it with a lot of pressure and like really trying to prove themselves which didn't work out very well and then whenever they finally started playing and having fun as a group that's when you saw those flashes last week of a really good team um so I think if they take the pressure off themselves and just play football because they already have a shortened season they're probably not going to make the college football playoffs even if they win everything else out like, I think they'll be a really good and fun team to watch because they'll be actually really competitive. Um, but I don't think this is Oregon's year. I think maybe next year, if they keep that young core group intact, they might be able to make some waves. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think they're going to win today, just not overall in, in the pack. I think Oregon takes this. Uh, Cal is own 3 They're not looking that good. They're – and Oregon – played really well last week granted Oregon State came out the better team they, they played on fire but we saw flashes of what could be a playoff team maybe next year I don't think they can catch up right now even as they're 23 they're three and one I think yeah. Washington would get to a Pac-12 championship before them and I just don't think you with this late in the season you can make from 23 to uh, a new year six bowl but this is where you start building on for next season. This is where you try to get as ranked as you, high as you can. So preseason rankings come 2021, your name is already there. Yeah, getting your name in the hat for next year already. Mm. Yeah. All right. Uh, I got Oregon. I think they'll carry that mentality that if you look good, you play good, and you play good, you win. I think it'll be close to the end. I think Oregon will win 21, 28. All right, calling the score. All right. <laughs> All right, so next up, we got Clemson at Virginia Tech. This has all of the signs of a trap game. Clemson needs wins to get to the ACC championship. If they lose, mm -hmm. Miami takes their spot, and I don't think Clemson makes playoffs anymore. That being said, this is a game everyone has Clemson already locked in to win it. It's Virginia Tech. Who cares? This has got to be the week that you got to be focused on Virginia Tech. Yeah, you got a big game next week. Yeah, you got the ACC championship still as of right now to look forward to but right now it's you got to be focusing week to week because any missteps will cost you that acc championship and your playoff spot that being said um trevor lawrence has been on fire since he came back and this is going to be a game where i don't think he's going to have those missteps that i was talking about i think they still have that very sturdy run game 
improvements still kind of need made on defense with a lot of teams, Clemson included, but I do think they get the big win this week and hopefully they can continue that success on into the next week. Yeah, I think Clemson's got this one this week as well. I know it has the markings for a trap game, but I don't know. The style Dabo Sweeney has, he's not one to overlook a game um, and start looking at next week. So I don't think that he's going to let his guys get confused or worried um, and, you know, think about next week. So I think Clemson's got this one easy. I do think Virginia Tech is a pretty decent team that always is shows up every year. They're always a mid-road 500 type of team. Um, so I don't think they're going to roll over, but I think Clemson yeah. still has. Um, I, I agree. Clemson's not the type of program. Dabo's not the type of coach to uh, fall for a trap game. But even the best coaches will, will fall for a trap game, even if they're not that style, even if they're looking at games – Think to Pittsburgh uh, last year yeah. and think to Syracuse. So I don't think he overlooks this game. I, I do see the, where this could be a trap game. Virginia Tech is much better than their record shows. Yes. But I just – I can't see it. I don't see it happening this week. Uh, I'm going to make it short and sweet. I think Clemson will win by 30 this week. I think Trevor Lawrence will pop off. And we'll probably score, probably throw three touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Oh, you're a little bold with this, Brady. He's starting to call touchdowns and scores. Yeah. Brady is so precise. He with is getting, run. he is really honing in here. Hey, yeah, we're, we're going to have to start uh, counting that as part of his record. Say, so yeah. if it's not even close to the score, he gets yeah. a loss even if he picks the winner. Yeah. But yeah, I'm not. Hey, but guess who has all the games right? You're one game ahead of me. Let's not get too. I've only been on the show for a couple weeks. Relax. <laughs> I only kept records since you've been on the show. <laughs> but yeah, I don't think that. I would like to say that my record should be one game higher than it is. Okay. No, no. this is ending no, now. No, no, no. No. Yes. Everyone no. heard me. You I can't continue to agree. Read the comments. You chose Michigan. I you picked need Wisconsin to go back and pending Graham Mertz COVID negative test. I know, but at the end of it, you said, but I'm right now I'm going to go with Michigan. Yeah, I said, the, as it currently you, lies, you lone survivor this bitch. Which will change <laughs> when <laughs> Graham Mertz comes <laughs> back. Sako's the like, fans... I'm going to leave a lone survivor here. Like, and then ends with, I'm going to pick Michigan. But if, okay. yeah, like well, you ended with, but if. End of every score, it depends on who scores more points. But I think this team's going to win. Does that mean if the other. Read, read the comments yeah. of the YouTube video. John, the fans oh, no, no, no. John went to hedge his bets on this and was like, no matter what, I can complain and say I got this right. No, I'm not hedging my bets. It's a very relevant. No, uh, not anymore. This is too far out. You to lost. Think, think college game day. They don't say at the end. They pick this team asterisk, but maybe this. Team yeah, there's no asterisk in this. One or the other, and you picked Michigan. Listen, yeah. I'm sorry you made the silly choice, but you did. Yeah. You decided <laughs> to pick the team up north and lost. I don't. I don't buy. It. I. My record should be one better than it is. Well, you'd still well, be the still worst person in the picks. You lose. I don't care if it's acknowledged. I want. I want it out there. I want the fans talking about it, and I want them to know. All right. Well, we fans don't have don't any fans. Don't have fans. Hey. <laughs> hey, listen. We got I'm some fans. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we got yeah. fans. Yay. Hey, yeah. we got dad, so there's two. All right, <laughs> so um, next up we got Alabama at LSU. It is not often where a school has two students that are up for a Heisman. Yeah, I know last year Ohio State had Fields and Chase Young. But even then, mm-hmm. it was an outlier to have two players both up for Heisman. And I mm-hmm. think Mac Jones and Najee Harris both could take a Heisman home. And that is a scary thought to anyone in the SEC right now. I think that having two Heisman candidates and Nick Saban as your head coach is a guaranteed win basically any week. It is going to be tough to beat them on offense. Alabama always has some good key pieces on defense that I don't think we've seen as much of, but – you have a great game in the air and on the ground with Saban making your play calling. It is almost impossible to pick them to lose at this point. I was proven wrong last week in the Iron Bowl mm. because they didn't have Saban and they still won. So you have to be taken out 
two thirds of that trifecta to even have a chance. You got to have Mac Jones off the field and Saban not coaching and be stuck with Najee Harris to even have a chance or some pairing of the, of only having one of the three. And I don't think that happens. I think Saban, I don't think that he's, again, he's looking forward to the SEC game already. He knows Mm -hmm. he already has his plans done, drawn up, good to go for his game against LSU today and against Arkansas next week. He already knows what he's going to do. He already has it planned out. The man is probably one of the best college football coaches we have seen ever. But um, I think Alabama wins this one with ease. No question. Coach O does not look like the same coach he was last year. But, yeah, I'm going to take the Tide win in this one. Mm-hmm. Hey, I forget, was J.K. Dobbins a high school contender last year? He was. He got in the talk for, like, a week, but then they went back to just Fields and Young. Okay. Yeah, I think, like, in the top – Six. JK yeah. was in there, but he wasn't invited to New York. So, like, back to no. so, All right. Um, so. But back to the picks. Uh, <laughs> I'm going with Alabama, too, but not the fact that, like, Alabama's all high and mighty. I think it's more in the respect that LSU just isn't really there this season. But I think the point that you may give about, like, people being scared of Alabama, people have been scared of Alabama every single year mm-hmm. since Nick Saban's been there. So the SEC is used to it. I don't think right. that any of the um, SEC teams are going to go into it being like, oh, no, this is Alabama. I think they're going to go into it saying this is our week to dethrone this yeah. big beast and play even harder and even better. Well, I'm I'm thinking with this, like, yes, it's always been tough to beat Alabama with Saban, but this is a year where they have you on the ground, they have you in the air, and they still have Saban coaching. It is a harder game than it has been in past years. Well, Alabama's always had a good run game. Like, yes. Back, but the thing is, they've either had but the great don't. quarterback in a good run game or a great run game and a good quarterback. But this mm-hmm. year, it seems like they've got it. They've got it all on offense. Yeah, I agree. Like, this year, they have a good running back and they have a good quarterback. But I also don't think that that's going to make anyone think twice about them being better or worse than they have been in years past. Like, I think every team's still going to go into it more excited that it is Alabama and that they have the chance to, like, dethrone them. Yeah. Um, but I don't think LSU's going to get it done today. I don't think LSU's um, there this season. LSU finally had a quarterback for the first time in, like, 20 years for two seasons, and now they're kind of confused. Now they don't have a quarterback again. So um, they have to kind of re-figure out their offense and everything. And then maybe in like two years, LSU will be back. But I don't see it happening this year or next year. Yeah. I'm picking Alabama. I think their talent is just overwhelming. You have Najee Harris, like you said. Mac Jones, they both have legitimate claims to the Heisman Trophy. That's not even including phenomenal offensive line play, that defense and your receivers – which it's just overwhelming for LSU right now, who has not looked the same as last year's LSU. Yeah, I think um, this is a rivalry game, so it's always going to be close, but you're going to be able to slow them down but not stop them, even playing LSU's best football. Yeah, I'm going to pick Alabama. I think uh, there will be a blowout, and Mac Jones will just destroy LSU's off defense. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I think the spread is like 20 something. It is a high spread. I, I remember seeing mm-hmm. last night. I don't know how much the line has it's changed. 22. It's 22. Oh my God. That's, sure. that's still at the highest of today, though. No. That goes to UNC as a 50 point favorite. But uh, all right. So we got a couple more games. Bleacher today. Report saying it's a 30 points uh, spread right now. Okay. 29 and a half. Yeah. Like ESPN 20. has it. Oh, I don't know. I, have, well, I checked it this morning, so it's been a while. All right, um, mm-hmm. next up we got Miami at Duke. Duke is going to get steamrolled this week. Mm-hmm. Um, at plain and simple, I think um, U has always prided themselves on that big, flashy defense. And while we haven't gotten to see it as much this year, I think this is the week where we see it again. You have a, a, an above-average defense matching up against a quarterback that is throwing more interceptions and touchdowns and is throwing around a 53% completion rate. It's this game is very much in Miami's favor. This is, you should win this without any issues. 
you should be winning this game, hoping that Clemson loses theirs and you can take their championship spot in the ACC. But uh, yeah, I think right now, I, I I think Miami is very much playing week to week and not looking ahead yet, be, just because you are in a conference with Clemson and Notre Dame right now, where they are a very good team. So it's kind of win win your game that week and worry about next week next week. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna take the Canes winning this one in a very lopsided game. Yeah, I'm going to go with Miami as well. I know I'm pretty sure today's Duke's senior night, so, like, that'll be big. Um, a lot of players will, you know, want to show up and show out for their senior night, but I don't think it's going to affect the game at all. I don't think that they're going to hold a candle to Miami. Um, I think they have, have – Miami has a lot – or has way more reasons to play – tough and hard um, just to make it to that ACC championship game. And I don't think they're going to stop fumble over Duke. I think they've got this one easy. Yeah. I'm also taking Miami. I think um, this is a very, a Miami team that's still very alive in conference championship talks. They don't control their own destiny, however. So I think that is kind of this grounding force where they're like, let's just focus on what we can do and let Clemson, do what they do but we need to focus on winning before anything yeah you need to focus on your win before you work focus on Clemson's loss yeah uh, I'm also taking Miami I think Duke is a team that they have years that they're good and they have years that they're bad one of these years is the bad and I think they also stick with basketball <laughs> yeah they seem well, to be great in basketball so yeah that that is one thing they seem to be yeah Seem to be great, yeah. They still seem to bust my March Madness bracket every year. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, all right, so we got two games left, and then we'll get into the news. Uh, first up, we got Baylor at Oklahoma. Rattler is amazed me. He At, at the beginning of the year, I thought Oklahoma's going to have their off year. They're not going to be great. This is going to be a year where I don't think they have the success they have in past years. But Rattler is looking to be the fourth quarterback under Lincoln Riley that is in the Heisman talks. And I don't think this is going to be the year just because of the two losses and COVID giving other guys more opportunity than others. Mm -hmm. But next in the next year or two, I think him and, uh, Oh my gosh, uh, I'm blanking on a name right now. Um, Graham Mertz. I think for the next two years, those two guys are going to be butting heads for who's going to win the Heisman. But, uh, I think that he absolutely will get a Heisman in, in the next couple of years and join Kyler Murray and Baker Mayfield in the Heisman house. And this is going to be a big win this week against Baylor, who isn't doing great on offense or on defense, where in previous years they've at least had a, a great defense at Baylor, where they just don't have it this year. So I'm going to take Oklahoma winning this one big, uh, taking the Sooners. I know we always joke about like the big 12 not having defenses but Oklahoma actually has a pretty good one this year um, and I don't really think Baylor is the Baylor of past so I don't yeah. really think they're gonna put up too much of a fight I think Oklahoma's gonna be able to run all over them pretty simple but I do think that they have a really good quarterback program if you can't already tell by the multiple Heisman winners in a row that they've had um, so it'll be exciting to see if they can get another one in the next few years. And I think that might change the vibe of the big 12. If a lot of elite players start going to the big 12, because they think they have the shot at winning the Heisman, that'd be interesting yeah. to watch. I'd be down. Yeah. I think Oklahoma wins this as well. I think they're in the position of the Oregon's and the Washington or the Oregon's where you, um, might not have a chance at the college football playoff this year or the new year six, because you're already at two losses, but this is where you win as as you can keep going as high as you can. So you're already there for next year. You have a head start. Your name's already in contention. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to take Oklahoma with this one. I think that they'll run all over uh, Baylor. Baylor has its years like with RG three, but I think this is the year that they're not looking too great. So I'm going to go. All right, and our big game of the day. The moment everyone has been waiting for, BYU at Coastal Carolina. BYU Coastal may be Carolina. an 11-point favorite, but I'm going to keep on rolling with the Chanticleers. They just have that special charisma on the surf turf. 
I think that this is going to be the game where Coastal proves they are the real deal. 100% taking the Chanticleers. Mm -hmm. Let's go. Wow. Things just got serious. Um, Things got serious. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm excited for this game. I think it was a really good get. Um, BYU... Mm, the only thing with this game is I would have actually very much liked it to be like a New Year's Six game. I would have loved to see yeah. these two teams play at the end of the year, just be like, who is the king of the non-Power Five other than Cincinnati, because it's pretty yeah, obvious. I would say it's Cincinnati. <laughs> but, you know, like, I hope Cincinnati makes the playoff. That's what mm -hmm. I'm still rooting for at this point. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I think I, – I really don't know. I think we're going to go with BYU – just because I like Zach Wilson. That's really the only reason. I love a good mullet, so like I won't be mad if either team wins. But I'm a fan of Zach Wilson, so I'm going to be you. All right. This is the game to watch if you love quarterback play. You have Heisman contender Zach Wilson versus a very good Grayson McCall who's leading the conference. I I love to see that this game is regular season. I love to see that they could put this together and two weeks maybe it shows that you don't need to schedule five six years out in advance to make something work and i'd love to see more of this um maybe next season where games are being Throw added part way through the season yeah but um i'm taking byu i think byu needs this more than coastal carolina does coastal nine they don't need this but coastal carolina is not in the um college football playoff talk and BYU feels like they should be there. They're not right there because the committee has looked at that schedule and said, we don't think this is enough. You pass the eye test, but these teams just aren't cutting it. And I don't know if the committee looks at a Coastal Carolina and says, oh, this is markedly better than who you've been playing will put you there because they've also disrespected Coastal Carolina a little by dropping them much lower than their AP rank. Was their AP rank 14? It was and now 14, they're, yeah. Yeah, they're 18 in the college football playoff ranking. I don't know how much this improves them, but anything that will help BYU, BYU, I think takes this one. All right, Andrew. Going with Coastal Carolina. All right. <laughs> there you go. All right. I'm going to go with Coastal Carolina. I think that they are going to run all over BYU. I think they'll have the moments when they throw interceptions do turnover on downs, but I think that they'll come out ready to play and win. Yeah, this is something uh, I could go either way. I'm, I'm going to take Coastal in this because I think they have a much bigger chip on their shoulder coming into this game. They were supposed to be dead last in the Sun Belt, and look at them now. They're undefeated. They're ranked. They got BYU this week. They got everyone excited for them. They have the surf turf. They have the Chanticleer, which nobody knew what it was before the start of the season. Oh, they have the Chanticleer Chandelier, that linebacker. They give him the nickname. They go after big wins and are pretending to be WWE wrestlers, busting people through <laughs> their strength and conditioning coaches through tables. And it's, it's a team that is having fun and going into every game going, no one thought we should be here, but we're here and we're going to give 120%. And that, that I think is the key. I think this BYU. Sorry. What? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say this is a team that proves that like the brotherhood and playing for each other is real and serious. Yeah. When it comes hmm. to team sports, because that's what they're doing. They're having fun and playing for each other, and it's clearly been paying off. There is a great camaraderie between this team, and you can tell yeah. it's evident when they play, when you see them on the sidelines. I think this is just a fun program to watch. Yeah, and this is regardless one... if they win today or not. Yeah. I do think, yeah, that everyone in this team had screenshots of them being supposedly the bottom of the barrel. And they're at this point, and now we get the big game mm -hmm. tonight of the Mormons versus the Mullets. And it's, it just has the makings for a great game on both sides of the ball. I just think Coast Carolina has, has that drive just a little bit more, where BYU has gotten to coast on some games. Mm -hmm. And for years now, I, I'm not – disregarding BYU's program or any bias, they have gotten to pick games and have typically in history picked easier schedules. And obviously now it is getting to pay off as a rank, but 
Coastal was a nobody and yeah, they've had to work their way up where BYU kind of already had the good graces of the committee in some regard Mm -hmm. and just had to keep winning these nothing games. And yeah, that's easier said than done, but I think Coastal just wants it more tonight and they're going to get the win off of a real close game. All right, I'm gonna have to hop off. I'm gonna go watch the Ohio State game. All right, um, real quick, we'll get through the news. Um, I have Rose to go, Bowl. Guys, I'm sorry, I have to go return Zuri, but I've had a lot of fun and I'm cheated too, clearly. So, yeah, all, all right. right, bye guys, bye, bye Aaron, bye. All right, all right, Bray, you gonna stay for the news? No, I'm gonna go, I have to go get ready to go clean. Okay. All right, that's fine. It, it'll, it'll only take five minutes. There's yeah. not a lot of news to talk okay. about. Not a lot of news, not a lot of rank stuff. Um, so the Rose Bowl and Fiesta Bowl, we played without fans this year, and there's no Rose Bowl parade. I know the Rose Bowl parade isn't the biggest part of it. It's the actual game, but it is going to be weird seeing it on TV without that giant parade from like noon mm-hmm. to one o'clock. And yeah, it's definitely going to change up the vibe a little bit but not a whole lot seeing as usually these are very neutral site games with a, mm-hmm. with the affiliations that they usually are. But yeah, I don't see, even if these were supposed to be the real big games, or at least the Rose Bowl was. And I do think that it doesn't affect home field advantage. And I, I don't think it has a real impact on the game in this year because no one really kind of knew who was going to be where or what was happening. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this it does seem weird to to be seeing bowl games not fans. Oh, it's going to be very weird. But I think it's the smart and the right choice to make. Yeah, I think it is absolutely the safe. Choice. These are playoff games. That you do not want these canceled. These are the big money makers for your school. Yeah. And if there's any chance, if there's anything you can do to reduce the chance of it getting either moved off a New Year's Day bowl yeah. or um, canceled all out outright. Um, you take that chance. You do whatever you can to play that game. Yeah. Big news, Ohio State just scored. All right, sweet. <laughs> State All right, uh, so we'll get to the news real quick so well, everyone can get to wait. watching the games. I don't know if they score, but it looked like his knee was already down. All right. Um, it was Master Peak, though. The only other bit of news that we saw this was, week was uh, – Georgia and Vanderbilt was canceled. Georgia and Vandy was canceled, which – Their it's... athletic director had some uh, comments to make. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if he was talking – specifically to the sec or all of college football where he was um saying how well some teams are doing at um not canceling their games at controlling the spread of the virus within their programs and the teams that are letting this run amok and canceling games are um it really shows the culture within the programs he's in yeah absolutely and obviously he I think he was talking specifically about Vanderbilt. I don't know if he's speaking to college football as a whole with programs like um, Maryland or um, I do. Wisconsin. I do think he may have been. And, I, and yes, there are great programs that have had to cancel due to COVID. But, yeah, you are seeing the worst teams are having to cancel more. And I think it's these guys aren't committed to the team, aren't committed to that brotherhood. And mm. they're not worried about getting COVID because, oh, no, they'll miss a the game. They still got scholarship. Yeah. And But, yeah, this is one. And the other news about Vandy, um, Sarah Fuller did have her one kick last week. It wasn't remains on Is going to remain on the team for the rest of yes. the season. Is going to be on, and we did get to see later on Sunday, she did compete in a women's soccer match and almost went goal to goal with a kick. And mm. that is very impressive. And I think that it, that squib was intentional. And it was not. I don't know if it was intentional, but. It Honestly, definitely was one to I, I stop them from getting the better strategy field position. In doing that. You, I think it was you knew your defense was going to let them loose, but at least try and hold them back just a little yeah. bit more. So do the squib so they can't try and run it up past you. But yeah, um, she received so much unwarranted Preventive. from a lot of guys on Twitter and TikTok mm-hmm. and Instagram that never played a Division One game, definitely mm-hmm. couldn't kick a football, and are smaller than her and probably could get their ass kicked by her. She is six foot two. There are a lot of people that are that are going to talk shit that because she's a girl and she had, maybe it was muffed, maybe it was a squib, that she can't kick as well as a guy. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not there. I do buy an argument not that. you a scholarship, so shut up. And like mm-hmm. this situation where she's doing something you can't do, don't need to belittle her at this point. If I would say 
if maybe in the next couple games there are more bad kicks or they aren't going the distance, maybe, yes, we can't say she couldn't get the job done. But at this point, there's one kick that was supposed to be a squib, apparently. Hop off and remember, she's in. A, she's going and playing two Division One sports. You're not doing anything. Yeah, I, I, call I, saying, all of the I do buy an argument that it's... Um, it was an intentional squib. Even if it wasn't, it doesn't matter, honestly. She's playing two more kick, and I think, sports than most people. Exactly. Um, if that was a male soccer player out there, um, I don't think people would bat an eye. It's like, oh, she, he's only had a week of practice. He's switching sports. Yeah. They make a lot of excuses for him that the a woman just won't get. But even without a hypothetical, honestly, it, what does it matter? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's it's about the only one news. kick. I'm love to see her kick again. I'd yeah, love to I'd... see her kick a field goal, score a point. That would be amazing. Yeah. That would be I that's the one thing point. I want to see is her score points and succeed. I'd love to see a lot of players that weren't given a fair shake that might be at a disadvantage get that mm-hmm. shake that they deserve. I, um, I like, I, I don't like to see thinly veiled sexism as a uh, form or. Er, veiled as a practicality they say oh she didn't earn the spot well they don't have a men's soccer team so they had to pick the best <laughs> they don't have best a men's option. soccer team these are people who don't want to look at facts but pretend to uh yeah. play the centrist role pretend there's a meritocracy there's yeah. no other kicker on that team you have yeah. to go to the women's she's team six foot and... two and a goalie i can tell you she has experience with place kicks and with punts she is absolutely on paper the best she option. is yeah. the best person for that job yeah she has earned that spot whether she performs or not yes um so yeah the only thing left to talk about right now is uh the rankings i don't think ohio state deserves the top four spot they didn't get to play last week mm-hmm. And I think it's been that, two weeks. Given that knowledge, they don't get the spot on Tuesday. And I think since he should have taken their spot, I don't think it should have mm-hmm. been a switch, but I think since he deserves a spot and Ohio state not playing was the perfect opportunity to slide him in. Yeah. If maybe it was mm-hmm. only for a week, I still think that Ohio state shouldn't be keeping their spot whenever they don't play. And that is a tough call to make is teams cancel and you don't see them move in the rankings. And yes, I do think if it's on the other team, you shouldn't be moving. But if it's a problem at Ohio State, it's on the program not having enough discipline to keep guys contained. And you maybe yeah. want to bump them a spot or two. I'm not saying drop them down eight spots, but move them a spot or two and let them know. We noticed that there's a lack of discipline. Hmm. But um, the other thing with is- the uh, college football until the final week, honestly. It doesn't even matter. You may get a small insight into what the committee's thinking yeah. or what they're valuing this season, but it really does not matter until those final rankings are released and bowl games are set. Yeah. So. Yeah. The only other comments I had was uh, I think Georgia, Iowa state, Oklahoma and Oklahoma state shouldn't be as high as they are with multiple losses. I do think a lot of them still deserve ranks because they are good teams, but mm. not as high as they are with I think two, the, two losses. Every Big 12 team is overranked by at yeah. least three spots. Yeah, and um, I think UNC should not be ranked with three losses. Yes, mm. this we said this week. One this was to a Notre Dame, Dame, but still. One's a Notre I, Dame, two are unranked. You're at three losses. You, you shouldn't be having a spot mm-hmm. at that point unless there are no other options. If yeah, you are I the best three loss team, I get it. With but... one or two loss that are being left out. Yes, there are better. I think th- even an SMU, one of those losses was to a top 10 Cincinnati. Yeah. I think they they may have a shot over North Carolina with three losses. And Yeah. It, are you the best team for that spot, or is it just you have a power five spot and you happen mm. to be three loss? Yeah. It's something I question with the committee. Hopefully they're able to remedy it. And the thing is, with this game this week, you know they'll stand because of the win, but I don't know. I think that needs a second look. And um, yeah. last thing I have is six group of five teams are in the ranks. And that's something that seems like the committee is actually doing right, is giving these mm. smaller schools more, more of a shake than they had in previous years. I, I do appreciate that. I still don't think they're taking them seriously as yeah, it, contenders. It That's almost evident. seems like it's an empty gesture. Like, hey, we gave them ranks. Like, come on. What else yeah. do you expect us to do? 
I don't think they're giving them a fair shot at the playoffs. I appreciate that they're there, but it may just be to placate them. Yeah. All right. I uh, think Cincinnati at 8-0 and has a shot to the four spot. They have a claim to that final playoff spot ahead of a four, previously three, uh, when Ohio State. And even with Texas A&M and uh, Florida ahead of them, one losses and losses to um or some wins that haven't looked that great texas a&m despite beating florida uh they struggled against bandy first game of the season yeah they got blown out by georgia and i think their resume isn't quite as strong as cincinnati's people like to say cincinnati plays in a high school conference but you look at that that's not true snp it's a tired narrative snp rankings show yeah, they're one of the better teams. That there are teams that are getting ranks that don't deserve it because mm. just because you're a power five, you shouldn't be getting a rank. Same as being a group five shouldn't automatically bump you to the bottom. I think that yeah, they it's are just getting... a tired narrative that people don't want to actually look at the statistics. They want to say, yeah. oh, you know, they can't complete, and that's their mind. They're made up on it. Yeah. When, I mean, when Cincinnati's brought in, you say, well, would they really last in a game against Alabama? It would be a blowout. We, yeah, but we've seen plenty of teams go into the Get playoffs. Get blown out. Blown out, yeah. It's, it's something that if you're worried about a blowout, then you're not actually considering both teams are good. You're I mean, college to... football is the only sport where the playoffs are conditioned about how well you think a team may do. Yeah. It's do a, you think it, the do Browns could beat the think... Chiefs? No. Nah. No. Are, are we saying the Browns don't deserve a playoff spot because they can't beat the Chiefs? Yeah, exactly. It's, 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 it's weird that it's, it's – could beat the Chiefs. It's um, situational that, oh, well, since, since he couldn't beat in Alabama or Clemson or mm-hmm. Notre Dame. Who the Steelers are going to be the anyway. first yeah. seed in the NFL playoffs ahead of the Chiefs. Yeah, and I but don't, I don't think, think anyone outside win. of Pittsburgh would actually – pick them in a game against the Chiefs. I'm not saying they can't win, but I don't think anyone would favor them. Yeah, and I've discussed with some St- some Steelers fans, they're like, I don't think we're the best team. No, like, but they deserve to be in the playoff. They deserve that win. one spot because yeah. they are winning games. Yeah. Yeah, whenever... People even say the narrative is already there that the Steelers haven't played anyone. Anyway. They played yeah. Washington, Dallas, Jacksonville, Cincinnati going to be twice. Yeah. You they don't have a very good strength of schedule, but they deserve McSorley. to be there. Uh, hey, here's another interesting fact. So, that's the second time they've almost lost to a Thurston quarterback. Yeah, that, that is another thing. <laughs> yeah, whenever they – oh, well, the Chiefs had just an easy of a schedule. Well, the Chiefs were dominating them through games. They mm-hmm. – at no point did I think the Chiefs would lose a game. No. And, yeah, they may have had an easy schedule, but <laughs> there were very few times where I was like, oh, Kansas City might lose this. As for Pittsburgh, I'm like – Cincinnati actually has the most wins – um, against teams with a winning record. Yeah, and that's any of the uh, contenders for that four spot. Yeah, and that's something that is being so overlooked that I think is is the mm-hmm. biggest factor in this. So w- when you actually look at statistics and facts, that they haven't played anyone, narrative falls apart. All right. Um, all right. So. That'll end our show. Remember, tune in next week. We should have another special guest next week. I won't disclose who, but um, yeah, remember to follow us on Twitter at Power 10 Sports. Go follow us on Twitch if you want to be updated when the show goes live. Follow us on YouTube so we can get a metric of how good we're doing. Give us a like, a comment, a follow, anything. Spread the word about the show. We appreciate everything that you fans do every week. It lets us know we're doing a good job. And um, that's the show. We'd like to thank you all for tuning in and have a great day. All right.